Hello buddy, it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War Warhammer 2 Quick Match Gameplay. This time around, we're on the Central Chaos Wastes, playing as the Force of the Empire against the Force of the Dawi, and, well, as you guys can probably figure, this is a bit of a classic counter pick. Dwarves, of course, do have quite the advantage going up against Empire, and there is a few sort of min-max builds you can try out as Empire that tend to work, uh, and personally I do prefer good old ranged spam or some sort of kitey gimmickry but I decided for once to try something a little more blunt force a little more brute force and so what we're gonna be rolling with here is a infantry tide so much like the lizardmen builds I do like running in this matchup where you just bring a whole bunch of temple guard and Saurus said we're gonna bring a horde of state troops and look to overwhelm the Dowie through sheer weight of HP and numbers so going over the build here for my lord I'm actually rocking good old Marcus Wolfhart and I think Wolfhart's a decent choice for supporting this kind of build he does of course have AP ranged missiles so he can do an okay amount of damage to any Dao infantry pick out key targets like troll hammers or iron drakes or enemy lords and characters for example he can pressure Thorgrim down really well because he is anti-large and AP he can shoot down artillery pieces like cannons or especially flame cannons that could otherwise threaten your troops and all that sort of stuff and of course his shots do pierce so if you get a flank shot he will punch through infantry rather well he also does have the amber bow which i decided to run here not entirely sure it's great investment necessarily but figured i'd give it a shot maybe get some meaty connections on some characters and then hunter snare which while it might seem awkward against the dawi being able to catch their missiles in position for your infantry to catch can be decent Going over the rest of the build, well, for our characters, we do have an Amber Wizard, and this bad boy is going to be the only mounted character in this build, and uh, that is just to help in position, because, of course, we're rocking two spells that I think are excellent against Dwarves. We're rocking Transformation of Kadon, Manticore Summon, always good, can help you pressure enemy backlines, potentially tear route them. Dawi, of course, very sturdy, but uh, Terra can still affect them, can still impact them. And finally, we do have the Amber Spear, which, well, it's... It can be disgusting. If you get a good lineup, especially on a map that's this flat and this open, like Chaos Waste, if you get a nice flank shot on a Dawi unit, it will get deleted in a single cast of Amber Spear. And obviously, we're going to be looking for those meaty shots with the Amber Wizard. For the infantry line, well, they are supported by Felix, and Felix is coming in fully stripped down, but that still makes him quite the potent character against the dwarves. He does have a bonus versus infantry of 20. I actually was about to say 15, but it's actually 20, which is higher than I thought. Uh, melee attack of 50 and 55, melee defense. 70 armor, not great, and obviously the HP at 3,000 is nothing to write home about either, but the main thing is he's got good sustained combat stats. He does have that self-heal, so he'll be fighting, he'll be self-medicating that whole time, and slowly but surely chewing his way through the enemy line while backed up by those stout Sons of Sigmar. So Sigmar Sons providing a bodyguard there, and behind them a tide of great swords, five units of them, as well as four fully chevron of swordsmen. So two on either flank, providing a bit of flank security as well as uh, surround potential. These guys with Chevrons like this will actually trade cost effectively with Longbeards and they will demolish Dwarf Warriors and cheaper Dwarven infantry. So definitely don't underestimate Swordsmen. They might seem like a cheap, crappy option against Dwarves with their lack of AP and lack of armor. But when Chevron up, in fact, even if you Chevron Swordsmen up to cost efficient, cost equal uh, equality with Dwarf Warriors, they will out trade them. So pretty potent there. And then two missile units. We do have the Sterling's Revenge as well as some handguns thrown into the mix here to provide some AP range support. For my opponent, he is rocking a rather standard dwarf line, I would say. There is a few oddball choices in here, like the Iron Drakes, but even those are not that rare against Empire. But going over the build, we're going to be seeing a triple Runesmith, Rune Lord build here. Rune Lord sitting atop his throne, so he will be providing that extra ma magic resist. Not that it matters against our all physical damage army. Master of Wrath and Rune, as well as Master of Negation, are there in the mix. So lots of snares, which will be very annoying. We're also seeing two Runesmiths. Both of whom have brought the Master of Groth one eye, which is an awkward one. I don't think it's really worth bringing, and uh, I think you don't really need the leadership. But perhaps hoping to just hold up my front line as long as possible uh, with units like the miners and the dwarf warriors, who would normally crumble kind of quickly against great swords. Besides that, we've got some corollars in the mix, looking, of course, to outshoot my missiles and to pressure my infantry with their decent AP of six. They will do even good damage to great swords. So as you can see, Wolfhard there is already popping some shots. There's also some Iron Drakes, as mentioned before. These guys will absolutely melt my infantry if they get good shots. And besides that, we do, of course, have some cannons. Artillery in the back, who is going to be teeing off on my infantry, already whittling those racers down. Some miners, and then Longbeards in the back, as well as the Grumbling Guard. So quite a potent backline defense, but as we can see here, Amber Spear does go in. And uh, yeah, those Quarrelers, 
had a straight up bad time then instantly wavering down to 21 models really not where they want to be in life as Felix does pile forward ditching his great sword back line and uh, does dive into the fray against iron drakes and he should be able to dice through them pretty quickly he should be able to kill their models rather efficiently and in the meantime we do have the sterns revenge pouring on the fire as explosions rock the screen and of course these iron drakes here are just washing away the great swords with gouts of flame and it's really not a good situation for us but uh, as long as felix is in here disrupting the iron drakes we should be able to get in there uh, unfortunately guard mode just allowing them to hold and keep firing uh, long after this should be overrun, but what can you do? It will get diced up by those great swords, and that'll be that. Grumbling guard over here is trading well with the great swords, so that is a little, little difficult, of a, or a little bit of a difficult situation. But we did get a nice charge on them, able to do a bit of damage. And in the meantime, gunfire reigns in. So these crawlers, bit of compromise here. The great swords pushing forward despite the flamethrower fire. They're just shrugging it all off relying on their own Grumreel Forged Armor to ignore the Dawi counterattack. And although they will be routed off, they did do quite a bit of damage. Pressure these crawlers back, which allows my guns to tee off on the enemy infantry line. Now obviously this isn't a bit of a this isn't really a bloodless push. Uh, you can see the infantry casualties racking up quickly. Sigmar's sons here all but eradicated. These swordsmen bleeding hard, trying to slug it out here with the Iron Drakes and Dwarf Warriors. And of course my opponent doing his best to throw infantry forces into the fray. He might swordsmen ship around up like this, cost over 600 gold, so we don't necessarily have the best numbers getting against my opponent. And uh, he does have those cheaper Dwarf Warriors and the Miners to throw in my path, and it is adding up. But fortunately, we are slowly but surely chewing our way through. Great Swords here actually out trading the Grumbling Guard with a bit of support. And these Swordsmen have actually made their way all around the flank, still fresh, and they are looking to get on those cannons as the Manticore chews through them. So, artillery pieces not having the greatest time, though not terror routing, as Dowie kind of tend to be. They just stick around, even though by all rights they should have fled. But uh, we are able to remove these Iron Drakes from play. And the Swordsmen continue pouring through. I'm just pushing them forward as much as I can. They do have 70 leadership with 9 chevrons, so they will be pretty beefy. Keep, keep in mind, it also improves their vigor, so they actually don't lose as much vigor from just running. And um, they're actually able to just flank and get into good positions. You just keep pressuring those miners, keep pressuring those Iron Drakes, and keep my opponent running. And that is really, really critical. So... We are able to actually pressure these Iron Drakes here. They get a few shots off on the uh, Great Swords, which is not good at all, but we are able to keep them running and running and running, just backing off. And definitely the tide is turning heavily against my opponent here. Felix over here, engaging on the Runesmith. Bit of a pit, pit fight here as the Runesmith just flee through Empire State Troops, and we are actually able to take the win there with very little left of my opponent's army. Obviously, Dwarves do like to fight to the bitter end, so that was going to be the case no matter what, but... Uh, there was definitely a still quite a massacre. So going over the build here, I'm not sure this is necessarily the build I would recommend. Obviously, this matchup is very difficult for Empire. No matter what you do, you're going to be facing a battle where you have to out micro and out position your opponent quite heavily. So even with this sort of composition, my opponent with some better positioning could have perhaps blocked my infantry a bit better allowed his guns to get more damage, or his flamethrowers and crossbows in this case, and that could have perhaps swung the tide. Uh, however, I do think uh, budget Sigvald <laughs> Felix here does do quite a good, good job against the dwarves. He was able to snipe out those characters in the late game, he was able to pressure the enemy infantry line early on, and just stayed in the fight, was able to snipe off models on the Iron Drakes, which is really, really valuable, and uh, all in all was just an absolute champion, pushing the line forward helping us keep that pressure going. Uh, Amber Wizard, also excellent work. 70 kills with the Amber Spear, which was insane. Managed to almost delete an entire unit of Corollers. And if you're able to remove a unit like that from play quickly, even though it's 550 gold, it is a pretty valuable cast for an 11 Winds of Magic spell. So very potent stuff there. The Manticore, of course, disrupting those cannons. So they still got insane value. And it was a bit of a difficult time. The cannons are just hard to take offline when you don't really, when you're in a faction that doesn't have great backline disrupt, even that Manticore just isn't able to do enough hurt, and to be honest, in hindsight, it might have been better off just using more Amber Spears to break my opponent's infantry line, rather than trying to, uh, rather than trying to get the, rid of those cannons, because do keep in mind, Amber Spears, unlike, say, a Wind Spell, are much di more difficult to dodge. Your opponent would have to, if they're engaged in melee, they have to actually reposition uh, out of the fight and try to pivot to face you head on. So it's much harder to dodge than, say, a, a pendulum where you just move back and it misses. So um, I think 
I probably could have gotten better value there if I just played that way, because the cannons were never shut down and the Manticore just kind of failed. Uh, and Wolfheart, another thing I wasn't entirely sold on. Um, granted, it's very difficult to get such a cheap Lord, but maybe I could have skimped on the Sterling's Revenge, crammed in a second unit of handguns instead. Uh, maybe, maybe I could have um, brought Carl Franz, for example, stripped down on foot or maybe on a horse and had him fighting alongside Felix, just pushing that frontline fight forward and helping the great swords win that frontline engagement. And I might have been better off there than using Marcus Wolfhart. So not entirely sure. Bit a bit of a tough one to decide, especially uh in the event that my opponent had brought something different like Iron Breakers. But uh I do think Marcus didn't quite pay off. 26 kills not great. Infantry of course did rather well, kind of chewed their way through the front line. And once that front line was gone, my opponent was just doomed. Keep in mind my opponent's army did include a lot of low model count units, so the Iron Drakes Obviously, aren't going to be massive kill counts there, but oh, they were all wiped to a man. Same with the artillery crews or the heroes, so there wasn't that much to kill. Um, but by the end of my opponent, didn't have too much left there besides a handful of infantry. And uh, I think the infantry squad held out rather well. Just main, main critique here, I think, was the wolf heart and the summons. May, maybe using the manticore to tear out the front line, get a faster break, or maybe bring in a different spell like. Uh, Pan's impenetrable belt, or maybe even Wisson's wild form, just to get a little more armor and non-AP damage could have been valuable. But hindsight, 2020. For my opponent's build, I don't think it's terrible. I do. My main critique here, obviously, against the mass gun build, this build is screwed because you just do not have anywhere near enough pressure to fight back. Um, so honestly, I would recommend dumping the Iron Drakes and just getting more Coilers or Rangers in there. I think you'd be much better off. My opponent clearly has the DLC here, so he could have easily. Um, for the cost of these Iron Drakes, and I get this is probably a bit of a test build, but instead of these Iron Drakes, you could have like four Rangers <laughs> in the mix in, in there, and you'd be in a much stronger position, in my opinion. Uh, since Rangers will still do rather well against Great Swords, they still do have that 6 AP, uh, but they got much more range, so they can actually fight back against guns and still in revenge, that sort of thing. But regardless, well played to my opponent here. Hopefully you guys did enjoy the video, as usual. Leave your thoughts, opinions, comments, and critiques down below. I will respond as soon as I can. Do thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye, we're now.